Welcome to Micro Terrors. Scary stories for kids. Where it's always the spooky season. Full of chills. Thrills. And spine tingling spooks. Micro Terrors are family friendly frights for those ages 8 and up. And while our stories are for younger ears, we are still talking about things that go bump in the night, and some children may not be able to handle what others can. Parental consent is recommended. Now, for tonight's Micro Terror. Curse of Sharksquito by Scott Donnelly it was a freak accident, the one that created Sharksquito. It was a one-in-a-billion chance, yet it happened. And now the small coastal town of Ocean Foam Bluffs has a problem on their hands. And it's summed up perfectly by a small little rhyme that everyone in town knows. By sea and by air, Sharksquito is everywhere. The sun set on Ocean Foam Bluffs, and the 4th of July festivities kicked off with a parade down Main Street, by where Benchley's general store used to be. Now it was just an empty building, forever immortalized as the place where the last attack from Sharksquito took place. It was the previous summer, late summer, but summer nonetheless. Just as the tourist season was wrapping up, Sharksquito rose from the depths of the Great Atlantic its wings flapping more than a thousand times every second to get itself airborne. The monstrosity hovered over ocean foam bluffs like a search helicopter, eyeing the town carefully, deciding on its next meal. It chose Benchley's general store as its place to dine, where five men had been working to repair the roof of the structure. Now, as the Fourth of July parade weaved through town and completed down by the docks, fireworks exploded in the sky to bring an end to the celebration. Residual smoke drifted through the night sky as the crowd slowly began to disperse. Three teenage brothers, sitting in a boat which had been secured to one of the docks, crinkled up their empty bags of chips and crunched up their soda cans. All right, Roy, the eldest brother, said as he stood up. Let's throw these things away and get home. Done and done, Peter, the middle brother, said, casually tossing his trash over the side of the boat and into the ocean water. I meant throw them into a trash can, Roy said. Peter shrugged. What's the difference? Littering, Richie, the youngest brother of only 13, said. Littering is the least of your worries, Roy said. Sharksquito doesn't like trash floating in his home. Peter scoffed. He laughed. Richie, however, looked confused. What's a Sharksquito? he asked. Just a local legend, Peter said. It's not real. It is real, Roy said. Don't you remember what happened at Benchley's general store last year? Peter laughed again. They were trying to repair the roof. There was a collapse. That's all there was to it. There was no Sharksquito. Something like that clearly can't exist anyway. Well, it does, Roy said, and you're going to upset it. Peter snatched the empty soda can out of Richie's hand and heaved it over the side of the boat. He hit the water with a smack and bobbed up and down. Silence filled the air between the three brothers. Richie seemed to grow nervous. Peter just smirked arrogantly. Roy leered at him. By sea and by air, Sharksquito is everywhere, Roy hauntingly whispered. Peter laughed again. It's just a stupid ghost story, he said. However, part of him refused to admit the way his older brother said the rhyme was indeed spooky. Roy turned to Richie. Years ago, a one-in-a-billion chance event happened. The stars aligned too perfectly. There was a chemical spill in these very waters. A great white shark was swimming through it. A mosquito buzzed just over the surface of the ocean. And then a storm rolled in. There was a great flash of lightning and a monstrous boom of thunder. 
the lightning struck down from the clouds, shooting straight through the mosquito, through the chemicals, and striking the shark. They say the ocean lit up in colors that never existed before. When everything was over and the storm was gone and waters were still, something new stalked the Atlantic. shark Skeeto? Richie nervously whimpered. The tension on the boat was thick, and Peter decided to slice through it like a hot knife through butter. Well, shark Skeeto can kiss my butt, Peter said, tossing another empty bag of chips overboard. This time, however, the bag never touched the water. The surface broke and a massive behemoth creature emerged. It was Shark Skeeto, swallowing up the bag first and then colliding with the boat. The jarring collision knocked all three kids from their feet. Peter fell overboard, just as Shark Skeeto sank back into the dark water. Peter! Roy shouted, catching his footing as the boat rocked wickedly on the wake caused by the monster. Richie scurried on his hands and knees to the closest corner he could find and cowered. Roy grabbed onto the side of the boat and looked over, watching the choppy waters finally settle back down. Then the surface suddenly broke again. The monstrous insectoid fish crashed through, rising up and over the ocean. It just hung in midair as if it had been lifted out of the water by a harness, its translucent wings flapping wildly, its jaw agape and showcasing its rows of sharp teeth a long, goopy proboscis extending out from somewhere. The monster made a sickening, gurgling noise, ocean water bubbling out from its gills and flowing out from between its teeth. Suddenly, out of nowhere, Shark Skeeto's eyes blew out from its head. Sparks exploded and rained down like a leaking pipe. Roy knew something was wrong. He backed away quickly and slipped on the wet surface of the boat, falling hard on his butt. Then, the proboscis, the tubular extension that extended out from the monster, cracked in half. Partially falling into the ocean, green slime gushed out of the half that was still attached. Then a single word sliced through all of the terror. Cut! Upon the single, angrily shouted word, all the lights came on, giving life to the filming studio where Shark Skeeto was being filmed. The film's director, Estes Edwards, sighed heavily and slunk back in his director's chair. He rubbed the bridge of his nose with his fingers and grumbled to himself. Sharksquito hung in the air, now motionless, but still spewing out the occasional spark. The actor who played Roy stood up and rubbed his butt where he was sure a bruise was already forming. The child portraying Richie stood up and looked around at the confused and concerned film crew. Estes Edwards finally stood up from his chair. The same thing happened to Spielberg, but with my film, he bitterly growled, the stunt double playing Peter clearly looks like a 45-year-old. I can see the harness on the shark mosquito, that tube thing shouldn't have broken, and for the love of all things logical, what on earth is this movie about? What's the message here? Don't litter in the ocean? Esta's voice echoed through the closed set. None of his cast or crew said a word. I'm an artist, not a schlock filmmaker, Estes roared. I want my films preparing in art house theaters, not straight to science fiction cable channels. Estes looked up at the monster his creature designers had made and couldn't help but laugh at it. He couldn't help but laugh at the idea, the script, the whole thing. He threw his arms up. Ah, I quit. Estes Edwards stormed away from his director's chair, pushing his way through his speechless and stunned cast and crew. He flung open the door to the studio warehouse they were shooting in. And that's when it happened. That's when the curse of Sharksquito was born. The force in which he had flung the door open hit the wall, creating a domino effect that led to the monstrous creature coming loose from its harness, swinging down across the studio and fatally crushing Estes Edwards. In the years that followed, Sharksquito was put before the camera several more times in an attempt to finish the film. However, every single time they tried, the production suffered horribly. There were fires on set, malfunctioning equipment, ghostly voices warning the cast and crew to stop making the film or else. 
it became apparent that the ghost of Estes Edwards, even in death, was trying to prevent the awful film from being made. Thank you for listening to Micro Terrors. Join us each Saturday for another scary story. For more fun, visit our website at microterrors.com, where we will also have spooky games you can print out and play, like wicked word searches, mysterious mazes, and more. Microterrors.com is also where you can find us on your favorite social media and even send in your own scary story for us to tell. Plus, you'll learn more about our author, Scott Donnelly, who has other horrors for both young and old. I hope you'll join me again soon for Micro Terrors, scary stories for kids. Da na 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 na, Micro Terrors. Da na 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 na, Micro Terrors.